So at one time or another, we've all had batteries for our favorite power tools. They go dead, so we end up having to go to the store and replace them. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can easily revive these the majority of the time and save you hundreds of dollars by not having to go and buy replacement batteries. And not only am I gonna show you how to do it with 20 volt, but I'm also gonna show you how to do it with your 18 volt batteries. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so here are your typical batteries. These are your 20 volt batteries. These are your 18 volt batteries. A lot of your Ryobis are gonna be 18 volt. And then of course you have a charging station. Well, a problem that commonly comes up is you've got one of your batteries. We're gonna start with the 20 volts and we'll get to the 18 volts later. But you've got your battery, you put it into your favorite power tool and it won't make the tool work. And then you put it on the charger like so. And when you put it on the charger, this light over here should be blinking once you put it on there. But we're not getting that. So what do people typically do? They take them out, they go, okay, this thing is a brick, it's just dead as a doornail. I need to go buy some new ones. They actually aren't dead. So this is my dead battery. I'll put it over here on the left. So I'll take this battery over here on the right. Now this one is fully charged and the way that this should have worked is more like this. I would have put my battery into the charger and as you can see, I've got a red light that is blinking. And again, that's showing me that the pack is charging properly. So I'll go ahead and take that off. Quickly show you again with the dead battery when I put it on. I got no blinking light. So if we take a really good look at the batteries up here close to where the charger gets inserted into these little slots right here, you will see some letters on it. And the two that we need to pay attention to are the slot over here on this side and the slot over here on this side. This says above this slot that this side is B positive, and then this slot over here is the B negative. Same thing with this battery. Obviously, it's the same kind of battery. We've got B positive and B negative. So I'm just gonna take my two batteries, I'm gonna put them up together like so. Again, this is the dead one. This is the one that's fully charged, and we're gonna use this fully charged battery to get this one working again. And all we're gonna really need is a couple pieces of wire. You can either use stereo wire, or in this case, this is actually just 14 gauge Romex, and it's gonna do the job really, really well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one side of my wire, I'm gonna insert it into the right side or the B negative side of my dead battery pack. And then I'm gonna take the other side of the wire and insert it into the B negative side of the fully charged battery pack. And I would highly recommend using insulated wire, not using a ground wire, because we're still gonna be dealing with some electricity here and you just don't wanna get shocked. Then I'm just gonna take a second piece of wire and I'm gonna insert it into the B positive side of my dead battery and then insert it into the B positive side of my fully charged battery. Okay, so now we are basically just jump starting this dead battery with this fully charged battery. The thing with these lithium batteries is when sometimes when they get completely depleted and they have no charge on them whatsoever, it doesn't register on the charging device that there's a battery inserted and it needs to be charged. So we just need to get just a slight charge into this dead battery to get the charger to recognize that there is in fact a battery inserted into it and that it needs to be charged. And it does not take very long. And then we can just remove those wires from the battery packs. I'm gonna move these out to the side on either side and then put our battery charger right there in the middle. And again, this was the dead battery. So let's see if it will take a charge now. And as you can see, the dead battery is now taking a charge. All we had to do was get a little bit of a charge into this battery so that the charger would recognize it and know that it had a battery to charge. Just really quickly, this, this is that battery. This is the fully charged battery. Just so you can see that both batteries are in fact taking a charge now. So I'm gonna let this battery charge up and see if we can't get it to work later once it's gotten charged. But until then, we're gonna move these out of the way and we're gonna move on to the 18 volt batteries, which a lot of your Ryobi tools are gonna to take 18 volt batteries, or you just bought the 18 volt version of whatever tools that you bought. And as you can see, the difference between these batteries and these, there is a huge difference. So the process for fixing these is gonna be a little bit different than it was for these, and I actually used some different methods in order to do so. All right, so again, my dead 18 volt is over here. My somewhat charged or fully charged battery is over here. 
And when we insert it into the charger, there's a light right here that when it's inserted, there should be a red light blinking right there. So let's go ahead and insert it in. And as you can see, the red light is not coming on, it's not blinking, and it doesn't know that it has a battery here that needs to be charged. Whereas when I take this out, and then I move over here to my other battery that does have a charge on it, put that in, as you can see, the light is now blinking. So clearly we have an issue with this 18 volt battery, much like we did with the 20 volt battery. So I'm gonna go ahead, remove this from the charger, and then I'm gonna take my two 18 volt batteries, I'm gonna put them together like I did with the 20 volt, and as you can see on these 18 volt batteries, instead of on the 20 volt, we had all these different slots here. We really only have two prongs on here. If I bring this up closer to the camera so you can see a little bit better, we've got a prong over here and we've got a prong over here. And those are the two prongs that supply and receive the power for the battery. So there are a couple of different ways that we can do this. I mean, you could use the wire like we did with the 20 volt, but you would have to really hold it up against each one of the prongs to make sure it's making good contact. And I just typically don't do it this way. A really, really great way of doing this is if you have some sort of alligator clips with two sides with alligator clips on it, if you could just take those alligator clips and put them on the post itself and it would just hold itself there in place and it could get its charge that way, that's one way of doing it. But if you don't have alligator clips, another way that works really, really well is actually with just a couple of pairs of scissors. And what we wanna be doing is connecting this prong on this battery to this prong on this battery, and then also this lower prong on this battery to this lower prong on this battery. So all I do is I take my scissors, spread them out like so, and I put them up against each one of the corresponding prongs. Again, you want them on the same prong as the other battery that you're connecting it to. And those scissors will hold themselves up against those prongs really easily and also send the electricity through those pieces of metal into the other battery. But we wanna complete it, so we actually have to use two pairs of scissors. So I've got one pair on this prong, one on this one. Then I'm gonna take my second pair of scissors. I'm just gonna insert them in onto those second prongs like so. And then I'm just gonna let those scissors do the work for me. They're gonna send the electricity across both sides of those scissors. And once those scissors have been connected to each one of those prongs for just a little bit of time, you can just pull the scissors out. And if you remember, the yellow one over here on the left was the dead one, the black one was the full battery. So I'll go ahead and insert the full battery again. As you can see, the light's still blinking, so we know we're good on that battery. Pull that out, take the yellow battery, insert it into the charger, and now, as you can see, the red light is now blinking, and this battery is now able to accept a charge. But we're gonna let that charge up, we're gonna move that out of the way, bring in this battery pack that is now fully charged up. We're gonna take that battery off of the charger. We're gonna insert it into our DeWalt drill here. And we're gonna pull the trigger. And as you can see, we're getting good power there. On these, you can actually check the battery level. You can see we've got a full charge on the battery. And now this battery that was dead just a little while ago is clearly good to go. There's plenty of torque on the battery and it does not need to be replaced. So instead of spending hundreds of dollars on new battery packs, all I did was use some scrap wire to get my 20 volt battery working again. And I took a couple of pairs of scissors that were laying around the house and I got my 18 volt batteries working again as well. But if you're still wanting to pick up some extra batteries, I have tons of batteries just because I hate having dead batteries and having to wait on them in order to finish a project. If you're wanting to add to your arsenal, I'll have links for everything you saw in this video down in the description down below. And if you haven't done so already, I'll also have a link for my Amazon store down in the description down below where I have listed all of my favorite tools and all the materials that you see on my channel on a regular basis. Everything from electrical to power tools, to hand tools and to materials that should just be kept on hand for fixes around the house. I'll have links for all that down in the description down below where you can check it all out. Now, if you found value in this video, then you're definitely gonna wanna check out this video right over here, where I'm gonna go over some things that really every homeowner should know about. So hopefully you found this to be helpful and informative. And if you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.